You know, I was born into a very low-income family. Uh, I've lived on a very low income for half or all of my adult life, I should say. And, you know, and I have, uh, you know, many friends who, professionals, that earn, you know, upwards of $100,000 a year, Canadian. And it's funny, and it's not funny, that they're always the ones complaining to me about their lives. And I never complain about mine. In fact, if I do complain, I usually complain to my friends about the fact that I always have to listen to their complaints and they never are interested in my life because my problems seem, I think, quite small to them by comparison. <laughs> um, I've never wanted more money. I've never felt like my happiness was connected to not having enough money. Um, I grew up with very few things and it felt wonderful to me. I never felt deprived, not a single moment. Um, I always had the food that I needed, I've always had shelter. And in and of itself, I'm in less than 10% of the population that's even had that level of life. So, um, no, I don't have any complaints. And um, if I can make choices where I have no complaints in my life, then certainly, well, since probably 75% of Canadians earn upwards of double of what I earn in a year, what are they complaining about? I mean, they have choices too, right? I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. I, I think about a lot of things. I don't understand why people would choose lives that they dislike. My friends complain to me quite frequently, and why is it that someone who earns probably the lowest percentile of income in, in this society feels bad for them? Not because I think their lives are bad or hard, but because they complain about their lives so much to me because of the choices that they make and the metaphysical contracts that they enter into, often called financial, but it's metaphysical. As sure as you enter into contract with a drug and with the Terence McKenna-esque, um, Timothy Leary-esque um, religious philosophy of drug taking, Terence McKenna is admitted to being a CIA operative, by the way, before he passed away, um, You're making a contract to gain what looks under the influence of drugs like higher brain function and freedom, really psychotic sedation of the acquired pain of generations of abuse, at the expense of other kinds of highly unpredictable deficits in ethical reasoning and intellectual competence that you don't care about because you're on drugs. Um, or you've made certain metaphysical contracts with the blood of Jesus, which is the same thing. Drugs are just proto-Christian cults. Drug cults are just proto-Christian cults. And Christianity is just a lower tier of global Satanism, which is really just the reversing of the entire value system of the native genius and feeling of men. And gaining a godlike influence over the mind. wowing the native God concept of a child so much as to undermine it and then build a new one on top of it. There are more cities to sack than there are cities in the world. There is the city of the human mind. And when we, people enter into these contracts with drugs, substances, philosophies, beliefs, conventions, godlike images of historical barbarity to technological salvation, cavemen to computers, which are completely reversed. We've actually gone down intelligence. We've become apes. We haven't arisen from them. Um, all of them have this in common, from evolution to Christianity, and that is it reduces the stature of man. And I take serious umbrage at that. 
not so much at the people at the top who are in control, but at the credulity of the masses who so easily forego their choice and their critical faculties and do everything they can to nourish the same abuse to their children and then sit back and feel at leisure to wonder why the world is so bad or problematic or violent. If I sound like a broken record, then so is the world, because it keeps coming round and round and round, telling us in each of our lives, in a very gracious way, not a sarcastic way, hey, do you want to look at this? Do you want to make new choices? Every, most of my friends suffer from some form of stress-related illness, and I always say to them, do you want to make new choices? And it's very difficult, and I understand. I've, I've made difficult choices in my life, too. I, it's not a deadline-related thing. I just say, do you want to make new choices? You can make them in your head. You can just see where life is leading you. You don't always have to bug out. But you can slowly change your mind with the suggestion that everything really wants to take you toward your greater enjoyment of life. All the forces of nature, all the forces of the stars, of the seasons, of the flowering of trees, of the spring of each new season, of the air and the oxygen, of the power of the transformation of the substance and, cosm and, and compass of, co of our cosmic existence, wants you to enjoy life more. That only, not only is inspiring, but it restores our native moral agency and responsibility for our own lives. You can't make a cult out of that. Because, as I was saying, drugs and cults and metaphysical financial contracts, social contracts, however meritorious they may seem, come at the considerable, and I would say monumental, monolithic, monstrous cost of losing brain function, often before we even knew we had it, which seems normal by the, albeit fairly liberal, st standards of a modern society. And then gaining, as it were, a diminished capacity to take appropriate interest in how that affects our thought and behavior with respect to the prompts and harms and alerts and effects in society as a whole. An entire abstract ethical pro process that we are relieved of by the same system that translates our seemingly innocuous behavior into every scale of violence that we see in the world. Call it a pyramid scheme, call it a cult. Call it a cybernetic physiology articulated into our every limb and organ of thought and being and desire and pride and vanity and then animated by the corporation of the human body and soul animated with our own tacit devotion, the way we become devoted to something that seems to relieve us of our pain at a considerable great, considerably greater and much an astronomically magnified cost that we lose in direct proportion any cognitive interest in apprehending. Does that sound like any world you're familiar with? I put a dating profile up. Um, I'll leave it to your imagination as to the kinds of antics that I got up to creating using words, basically what amounts to a castle and a moat for the dubious prospect of allowing any other mind into my personal life of the female persuasion. Um, and same goes for women. I, I imagine it's quite a daunting prospect letting men into your life as well. Um, in one year, I have now officially, as of last night, received exactly one congenial response. What does that tell you? And not about women, about human beings. Right? We're all living in the same world. Well, we've all got our share of responsibility. And yes, it's going to manifest and prey upon different, otherwise extremely exceptional, sexual uh, differences. The fact that we're different doesn't make us 
better or worse. The fact is, is just that every aspect of the beautiful distinctions between men and women are going to be preyed upon by a society that preys upon um, reducing the stature of men. So this is my morning. This is where I've been getting to come meditate every day. In about a month, I'll be meditating on quite a broad number of acres with some horses. So we'll move there, and hopefully, as life and art progress, we'll have lots of interesting places to be and things to talk about and think about. I make no apologies for the uh, wandering nature of these videos, nor the number of them, because, you know, they're for whoever wants to watch them. They're a legacy. And there's something of the legacy I wish to conceive of a motherland whose purpose is to magnify the legacy of the invisible energies of man, and hopefully man and woman. I don't constrain my... I would sooner constrain my creativity to the conventions of Twitter or YouTube or what people find popular as I would constrain my breath because someone finds it offensive that I happen to be exchanging carb or oxygen for carbon dioxide. <laughs> it makes that much sense to me. And uh, it might seem strange to some people to, to hear me say that, um, and, and that's of course why I need to say it, because that seems strange to you. <laughs> I, uh, I've drawn a line in the stand from, by uh, how much I'm willing to constrain my own native genius feeling and communication skills. <laughs> Because literally every institution and every organ, cybernetic and human of this world, if left unquestioned, is generally, by every prevalence of evidence around us, whatever it means to do, needs to restrict the communication of ourselves and our families with our land and one another to every predictably morbid result that we see around us and to absolve everyone involved of all proportional knowledge and responsibility. Now, rewind that and listen to it again, and listen to it again, and listen until again until it makes sense to you. Consider that a warning sign on the physical plane of the earth. This is a different kind of school. This is a living school. All right? I have no patience for bullies. I have no patience for people who don't want to think. Ask a respectful question, and you'll get a respectful answer. I have enormous amount of respect for children, for native human intelligence, genius. The fact that everyone rightly suspects the monumental import of whatever they believe to be true. As Papa TK uh, commented recently, you know, there's so much, so logical and so empirical evidence for a flat earth, it is mind-boggling, if not so much that someone's not willing to accept it. Although that is strange in itself. But, you know, it's, you, know you spend all your life believing in a globe earth, that affects your, that affects your mind, and you know, it took, took time for me too, so I respect that. But that feel the necessity to heap ridicule upon people who are doing everything that everyone says is important, which is looking at evidence and using their minds. So, shout out to Papa TK. Thanks very much for staying with this channel. Because I, I'm i fairly certain there's probably a lot of things that you disagree with that I say, and that's great. Bring it up in any time. You've made, and all of your comments are always very um, pertinent and useful. You've clearly done a lot of work, so... Uh, and, you know, all the other regulars, too. Shout out to you. So, you know, Scott Moreau, uh, 71, the one. Sorry if I messed that up a little bit. Papa, I said Papa TK, uh, Tinfoil Hatter, and um, I Am Free. I haven't seen them around for a little while, but always uh, pleasant to read all of your comments. I mean, I mean that, very pleasant. I mean, uh, it takes two or three, three or four people who are just willing to sit back and say, you know, it's kind of fun to use what God gave me. So, um, let's, you know, let's proceed in a systematic way. No, no one person is going to have all the answers.
we need everyone in the world everyone's input unfortunately people are absolved a lot of the input that they had to give when they were born and uh, that is a pity it's a pity how long it's taken me and I just think to myself how much more I'm gonna learn in the next 20 or 50 years and that's great um, you know, I don't have to operate heavy machinery. I'm not setting national policy. And I'm at liberty to think and say whatever I like. And I've made choices to make sure that that's exactly the way it's going to remain. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. I really enjoy uh, doing this. And I hope that uh, people enjoy listening to it. Um, I can't think of any more important, anything more important or more joyful more scientific and more psychologically healthy than making a space suitable to conceive of a sufficient thought to conceive of a space and a way of life to farm the best possible thought we can have and cast together into cosmic space as human beings to assure, hopefully, the safety of all of our unborn children forever. What a wonderful project. What a wonderful project. I can't think of a better researched institute. I can't think of a better way of life. I can't think of a better cult. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's all I do. That's all, that's the only song I've heard since I was born. And all of my experiences, and particularly my considerably traumatic ones, have alerted me to the importance of conceiving of a sufficient space for our, for a child and thus for all mankind. The human body and soul is the, administ the administrator of the continuity and transformation of, cos of the substance of cosmic life. The body and soul of man is the administrator, the proper administrator, for the continuity and transformation of the compass and the substance of cosmic life. Bliss. living in bliss, living with bliss. For the sake of the unfolding and expansion of bliss forever. And just because we may not have experienced it or are not experiencing as much as we like, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It takes bliss to conceive of this world. Get to know bliss. Think about it. Think about what it means. Think about its qualities. Think about what it means to be unchanging and yet to be capable of changing and upholding everything. All change forever. Think about your own self. The unchanging self that changes everything. Acquaint yourself with these deeper, more subtle, and in many ways most substantial regions of the mind. For the nectar of forever is the nature of the mind. I haven't written a single book in the last ten years that didn't make use of that theorem. That's a theorem that I would like to live out. That's an image that I want to live out. One where I can be ever happier, served by every force and element and emotion and feeling and thought of God and nature. And with that increasing happiness and with that increasing joy and coordination of those living images and filaments and feelings and atoms and cells and heritage and destiny and memory and sense and feeling and thought, so can everyone else forever. The power of conceiving of anything it, you know, that at least, at the very least, is placed in the spectrum of a motherland and proper and sufficient communication with our own food. In the spectrum. I don't mean we can have that with a snap of my fingers, and nor need we. Things take time in life, and it can be a very enjoyable process to go from any level of ignorance to any greater level of knowledge. This isn't a penal colony, although we've created a world that makes it look like that's the case. Evolution says the world just looks like it's intelligent design. 
the world makes it look as though it's a penal colony, but it's not. It's a paradise. Grace that, like a mother and a father with a devoted, radiant, angelic daughter or son, is utterly devoted to our development or redevelopment, to our growth or rehabilitation, with a, a level of attention and anticipation of our supremely personal and soulful needs and unmet needs and desires and lives and capacities and talents and aptitudes that is beyond our comprehension, but not be beyond our ability to enjoy the benefit of, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Where the most advanced technological society is but a fraction meted out in graduations and degrees of the lands and riches robbed from us, but a fraction of our vast natural, emotional, physical, and spiritual inheritance, heritage, memory, and destiny, that of the born coordination, body of soul, with the whole of cosmic life, that of the full value of the cosmic sun, of the living sun, of the born coordination, communication, and correspondence of all of ourselves with all of the particles of food and life and creatures and matter around us. The bliss and the substance of life. Man, the administrator of the transformation of the continuity, administrator of the continuity and transformation of the substance of cosmic life, the compass of life in terms of our own lives. That of the matter of the body, that of the words, that of our mouths, that of the habits of cosmic life. And you'll recognize bits of this in various different philosophies from Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Christianity. Even Rosicrucianism. Probably Freemasonic religions. Right? But these religions though watersheds of ancient human wisdom quite often themselves have been created or distorted to divert man from his full stature, to reverse the logic of bliss becomes the capacity to operate in bliss, rather than qualities of what we think is a person operating in bliss being imposed upon the mind through adverse discipline or renunciation to hopefully get some bliss here or in a million lives and that is not how it works that's how you create more suffering in the name of God or religion or spirituality or Buddhist philosophy just look at what goes on in these monasteries and churches all over the world does that look like these people are increasing their mental health notwithstanding the fact that a, a certain distribution or percentage is going to benefit from even the most meager philo philosophical reservoir. Right? Not everyone's going to get sick the same amount. No one's gonna, not everyone's going to get sick the same way. I'm not into, you know, pointing at, you know, minuscule percentages of people and saying, hey, look, that, that wor the world works. You know, this guy smoked his entire life and he's fine. And, you know, for all we know, how do I know what causes cancer? I mean, everything, anything. Maybe it's the best thing that happened to some people. I've been very sick. I, knew, I know what caused it for me was nature's interest in helping relieve me of suffering and increase my capacity to enjoy life and, at the same time, without excluding, and this is the most important part, my capacity to gain the full value of my painful emotional experience. An element that's left out of just about every New Age book in the world, which is why I'll never get paid $100 a head to tell people that most of their spiritual and intellectual teachers are, for the most part, no more mentally healthy than they are. I call myself a paragon of mental health because no one else in my life would ever think of doing so. That's a joke, by the way. But I think it's good to feel good about yourself. I mean, I don't think, 
you know we have to see things in perspective you know it's very hard to claim sanity living in this world I don't think anyone who lives in this world can be completely immune to some form of psychosis at the same time look how well we do all considered so um, there's different ways of looking at things and I think we need to include all of those ways thanks for listening